fucking I know we talked about doing uh an in-person interview. We've been talking about that for fucking I don't know, a million years, but obviously <laughs> shit did not work out well for that. Crazy. No one's doing in-person anything right now. No, they fucking shouldn't be at least, but you know. I I went to a social distanced wedding. Oh yeah, it was friend. Yeah, it was got, Eric, right? Got, yeah, Eric got married. There was like, you know, really like 15 20 people tops and we were just all like spaced out you know but it's crazy you know it's yeah good though i just we want everyone to be safe and but, you know it's all, it's, it's all you can really hope for that's exactly the the vibe man and of course like you're you're someone who is considerate and compassionate so you're not going to be like man what the fuck i want to throw a rager i mean i do but i know better yeah you know I mean? <laughs> oh it's like I mean, I feel like everybody does, you know, like we've been all cooped up for so long. And then, and then, you know, the country starts hurting, you know, like because of everything that was going on socially and, and racially, you know, yeah, the Black Lives Matter movement. So it's like, and, and what a time, you know, so I just, I, I really feel for people right now. I really sympathize with people. And even though I don't really have like a, a job, a tour, like, a, you know, like a, <laughs> Like I am, you know, I'm proud to be a musician during times like this because it's like at least people got music and they got their you know favorite movies and books and stuff. So, yeah. Thank God for that, man. I feel like we're on the same page as far as that's concerned, because like both of us are still able to work, maybe not in one of the ways yeah. that we both started leaning on, which was like touring, you know, mm -hmm. which that's yeah. that's got to be kind of like a blessing and a curse right because you you got young kids now right you have an, a two kids yeah i have a, a nine month old and i have a three-year-old who's more like a 13 year old <laughs> it must be nice to be able out. to stay home with them though like of all the times Dude, for touring to be kind of shut it is it's a trip and and that's like one of the things you know like you you hit it on the head it, it is a blessing in a disguise it's like i do this for a living and you know nobody buys music so <laughs> touring is how we all pay our bills um and but on the flip side it's like my job is to literally be like away from my family for a living that's like kind of how it works you mm -hmm. know? um that's how i that's how daddy pays the bills so <laughs> so so, you know, at the expense of income, I get to spend time with my family. That's how, like, I'm down for that. Yeah. You know, I'll, 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 I'll take that time that never, you know, I, I, I heard this old lady once say, you either have the time and not the money or you have the money, but not the time. Mm. And, you know, I never forgot that. And, and I just, you know, I, I count my blessings. Like, at least we have a healthy family and. I get to spend time with them now. So yeah, fuck even yeah. The kids are driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're there for, though. Like you don't go into the the steps of like procreation not knowing that like God. kids are a fucking thing. Dude, seriously, <laughs> I really do. I really do believe that. Uh, uh, like if people spend time with other people with with like younger kids, you know, under four year olds, toddlers, and and younger that's like the best form of like child support or uh child like protection you know mm -hmm. like um yeah man like no kids don't want to use condoms but dude they really don't want to be chasing around a toddler yes you know what I mean? like, that's just what it is so. that definitely that's is an effective form of birth control you like control. yeah that's I have to say. you yep. see all the little totally. sticky fingers kool-aid mouths running around and you're like whoa oh shit no Straight up, my kid, like, we were in the kitchen, we were, like, cooking, and we just made, like, his bowl of spaghetti, and he was eating spaghetti. This is when he was allowed to eat in the living room. <laughs> was, like, eating on the ottoman, eating spaghetti, and I was watching him, and he's, like, watching his movie, and he's eating it, and he gets, like, spaghetti sauce on his mouth, but he's, like, still watching the movie, and he turns around and just wipes his mouth all over the couch cushion and just keeps <laughs> watching the movie. And I'm, like, Excuse me! Oh my god, I got so mad. Oh it's like, my the god, these tiny like, freeloaders, the, man, the no respect. Dude, <laughs> the rudest roommates you've ever had in your fucking life, kid. I swear to God. 
Oh man, I want I want to have kids. Like my man and I talk about it. We're like at that point where as soon as things kind of get a little less crazy, we're like, fuck it, let's make some people puppies. But I also uh, relish like every morning that I wake up and like the most the most taxing thing or the thing that requires my attention immediately is like the dogs. And if we let them up on the bed, then they'll shut up real quick. Like, ah, come on here. Like, let's yeah. just be lazy. Oh man, our sweet dogs. Yeah, that that they they are the ones that I feel the most sorry for because it's like all oh, your time God. just it goes to these kids keeping yep. them not even just fed but from like like preventing them from like killing themselves yeah. jumping off <laughs> and, like i swear to god boys are insane man and uh... like our dogs you know like they were like you know our lives you take them everywhere sleeping on the bed sleeping on the couch you know and then you have a baby and then you see a dog hair in the middle of its eyeball and you're like <laughs> no more dogs on the bed like it's like crazy oh but my god that's what life is you know Life is, 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 is a series of, of adjustments, man. Yeah. You know, like imagine being the same person you were your entire life. That sounds like so boring. Like you got to have room for growth, you know? So boring like, and like so ignorant, you know, like if ignorant. you genuinely have the same views you had as like a young person, like a teenager or some shit, you're probably willfully ignoring a lot of important shit that you need. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Willfully, you're because with the internet and all that shit now, it's like, come on, man. Like, there's no, there's no excuse to be limiting your knowledge like that, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's crazy. I just, I feel like people need to embrace that side a little bit more, you know. Yeah, change is good, folks. Fuck yeah, and that's coming from from an artiste, friends. You know, that that change helps tie into like evolution of any kind of creator right oh you you i mean okay everybody we all know that like how many of our favorite artists have like their best albums are like the first two and then they just slowly get shittier and, <laughs> shittier, and shittier and it's because of change but it's all good because it's like it grows shittier to you as like a 15 year old but then like you're you're you guys are kind of doing this you know what i mean it's like they're getting older and maturing and like you're kind of like getting like a, like older but you're in your teenage years and you're discovering bands and stuff you know they're like how come they don't play as fast as they used to or, or as hard and it's like because they got kids and, you know, they're, like they're not staying up till fucking five in the morning getting drunk you know like, yep so oh shit i broke it there we go it, it has a huge effect on on the art you know i mean absolutely like you hear musicians and and they hate making the same album twice and that's why you know like there are some artists who are um phenomenal artists who really understand like like the opportunity and the blessing that you get to be in a musician that travels the world and you're able to pay your bills so you won't really insult your audience by making like a fucking techno album <laughs> like a metal band or something but like you know like there's far and few artists who really like know their audience and and know what they do and do it really well and and, and stick to their guns you know and, and i don't know i think that's tight you know there's like the johnny cashes of the world and stuff like that I just think that's rad, you know? Do you feel like um, like that can feel a little bit like stifling at times? The notion that every time your sense of self and like your music evolves, you stand the chance of like kind of losing touch with someone who liked that old version of you or that old version of you slash like your music? Like they'd be lying. A musician would be lying. If, if they said that they didn't think about that because it's true like you're you you do think about that um but for me personally uh you know i i try to respectfully take my fans on the journey um i know the parameters of what you know what's acceptable you know what i mean like i'm part of a beautiful legacy being sublime and i'm very grateful to have stepped into that legacy um but I wouldn't go in there and start changing up the decor. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, there's no way like, I go in there and make a techno album or something like that. 
Um, oh my god, that and, just and made me hurt in my soul like, for a second. Just like, like our 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 bass player album or our our bass player Eric, like he really likes like progressive music, like really kind of like space rock, you know, shit that doesn't sound anything like uh, um, your quintessential Sublime album that you know we have come to know and love. Um, but he's not going to put that on a Sublime with Rome record, you know, because he respects the fans mm -hmm. and respects, you know, that there are limits to, to art, not necessarily the limits, but there are creative boundaries that you do kind of keep in place for, for sense of order, if, if, if not anything else, but yeah, I, I think some people really take that and make it extremely narrow. Mm. You know, there are some fans where you're like, dude, you could like, do something different you know yeah a little bit um and then there are bands who just completely operate on their own thing which is cool i you know again i have no you, you do whatever you want man it's art but you know that's that's just like my opinion and you know of the bands that i've come to love over the years they've uh they've always been able to kind of keep it even when dancing around in other genres or stuff like that they still kind of made it their own yeah and and, and kept it kind of the integrity has always been there. Yeah. That's fucking hard. That's it's really gotta hard. be. Like, I know just from, like, my own career experience, when people get into the game of, like, content creation, it's it's kind of a similar vibe. Like, you're really putting yourself out there. You're creating what other whatever kind of content it is that fits you in that moment. And some people listen so much to other people when they get started on Twitch that they create content that isn't truly reflective of who they are. And then eventually they get fucking tired of it. They start feeling like they have to stay in this like kind of conform, like I got to stay this person or else I'll lose my community. And it, it almost always leads to this burnout where they're like, fuck, dude, I'm starting over. I'm going to go from the hundreds of viewers I had down to however many show up, but I'm going to do me now. Like, Or even worse, they say, fuck it, I'm done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. dude, totally. I think it's even worse for, for content creators, to be honest with you. Like, I mean, it's one thing for like a musician or something. Um, it must be cool to be an actor in that regard because you can just go do whatever role you want. Um, but for like, sp for specifically content creators, man, it's like super hard for like, because you guys get, you know, content creators will like be output, 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 output. Oh, something catches on. Awesome. We're going to do a little bit more of that. And then mm -hmm. it gets really skewed. It gets skewed by the audience. And like you said, after a while, like you start to, you know, you start to want to grow as a person. Yeah. Like you're saying, and you want to try new things. And dude, like people are relentless towards content creators because the moment you kind of step outside of anything, whether it's fucking tutorial videos or, whatever you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. people just they get mean yeah and like really mean <laughs> yeah you know? it's like not fair it's know? very it's deeply like personal stuff that some folks will like send and it's so wild because like the goal is obviously to not take it personal even though they're trying to make it that way but like shit's weird man some people get very wrapped up in who they think we're supposed to be and i think that is exactly what it is because you see, we as artists, uh, musical artists, we're, we're, we're all artists, but as, as mm -hmm. musical artists, like we get to hide behind our art and our music, you know what I mean? So like, if the fan is involved enough, they'll make it through and, you know, follow my wife's Instagram and shit, but like, or try to, she's private. <laughs> um, but, but for content creators, it's just like, they fall in love with your personality and that's that. And and by the way, I, I do feel like that's kind of fading for musicians as well. Like, you know, where you can just make your album, go on tour, and then go hide, you know, for the rest of the year. Like, that doesn't really, it doesn't work like that anymore. People um, demand a lot, a lot. They would demand a lot of you. Yeah. You, you know? And honestly, like, I'm like torn between that, right? Because it's like, um... We're in the entertainment business. We are here to entertain people. Let's not get it twisted. People aren't necessarily, like, they're not necessarily interested in what, who we would vote for or, 
what kind of food we eat or whatever, although some are, but for the most part, they are following or listening to us for one specific reason. Mm -hmm. And let's not get distracted from what that point is. So I think, you know, it's also weird when I follow artists and they're like, like start just super injecting their political views into things like every message and it's like, dude, whoa, okay. Like, uh, wasn't really expecting that, you know, and then they yeah. do an album and it's like all, you know, like going whichever way. So, and, and I don't know, like that's, that's kind of where you start to like lose people, I feel like, and then you start to turn people against each other. And so like, th there is like a way where you can kind of like, um, peacefully do what you need to do and grow without, you know, putting a divide. Yeah. But you're always going to, you're going to lose everybody. You're, 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 you're going to lose a few people along the way. You yes. Know, that's just how it goes, you know? You no one, okay no one gets to live that life where they are for everyone and everyone is for them. And that's like one of the hardest things to communicate to the community here is because there's so many people in, the, in my community that are very interested in content creation or in pursuing some other kind of career that puts them like in front of people like that. And just like Dude. letting them know straight up, like, listen, there are going to be people who hate your fucking guts. <laughs> you will have no idea yeah. why, or maybe you will, but like either way, you can't let that shit phase you. Cause like, even before you started putting your face on shit, there was someone who hated you. Like there's people get so twisted oh, up. You could be the me. nicest fucking person in the world. And they're going to look at you and just be like, mm, no, he fucking looked past me one day. And you're like in your head space and out. Therefore he's a dick, you know? Yeah. And then they'll just comment on that for like the next five years. Yeah, exactly. They fucking do, hold but... it. But man, like, <laughs> yeah. like going back to, to you talking about like artists and incorporating things like politics and stuff. Typically, I'm, I'm kind of with you when it comes to like an, any kind of artist or anyone who wants to allow their stuff to be for everyone. And so they don't put on any, put in anything that could be potentially divisive. But like this particular year, or I guess you could even say the last four, I feel like that's no longer an option if if you're in the US especially. Like it, yeah. it sucks to be in that position where you have to like take a stand, but it's not our fucking fault necessarily. We're there and we're dealing with su such significant human rights issues that like we really can't be of that state of mind this time around. Like I, I never yeah. expected to be in a position where I would be talking so much about like politics and shit on my channel. But like, how could you not? Fuck yeah! Now suddenly I'm like, I I gotta say it, friends. This sucks, but we all have to vote Biden. I don't like the guy. Yeah. He creeps me out. He looks weird. He acts weird. Like I don't I don't I don't want Biden in office. I want Trump out of office. Like I'm terrified like of what comes too. next. It's it's crazy because it's like we're constantly put in this position. It feels like you know, like we're we're always pitted against just two people that we don't want in office you know mm -hmm. what i mean and and then it, it it becomes like this huge divide and if one thing trump has been um extremely profound at is creating a huge divide yeah he's country. really good at that like man he he didn't even have to build the wall he already did it yeah and he did it in the united states of america so it's 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 a really weird time in that regard and and i do agree that you know the one or there there were a series of positive things, but one of the you know big positive things from from these latest events, I think is that it taught people that it's okay to talk about yeah you know, these racial injustices it it taught white people that it's okay to 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 talk about it, yeah, you know like you because the problem when when you don't talk about it's like your own relationships, right like when you just hold shit in you after a while you become resentful or it becomes awkward or, and you get all these weird emotions that are just super avoidable if, if you just discuss, Yeah, you know, talk to people about it. And, and I've, you know, I've, I'd even love to like, just see some of my friends who aren't entertainers, just some of my friends who are, they just go on their Instagram, you know, like, especially when George Floyd was murdered, like in the beginning, like, you know, they were on their Instagram, just like talking about it openly. And it was, you know, it was, it was, it was kind of awesome to see them discuss their feelings. Yeah. Like that because normally you would, you wouldn't know. And I don't know, like children, 
they're the next generation of everything, right? So I feel like it's in their best interest for us to be able to express that 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 pain, and that that fear, and unacceptance. They they need to understand that. You know? Yeah, yeah, man. I I grew up like raised by a white family, because like my my real dad's from Mexico, but I didn't I didn't get to grow up with him. So I was raised in like a really conservative area outside of the city of Chicago. So like most of the summers and weekends and shit, I was down there seeing shows and stuff. But otherwise, like I, I was so ignorant. And at, at that point, it wasn't necessarily willfully ignorant because the systemic racism is so fucking bad that like yeah. I would have had to work really hard to find the information that should be so fucking evident. It's deep. It's yeah, deep. It, but like, now starts in the nursery rhyme. Yes, you know? and now thank God we're in this position where, like, like you're talking about the fucking youth. We've got this massive platform. There's people on TikTok just spitting spittin facts as like 16 year olds. I was such a fucking idiot at 16. I know. I know. But like, we're it's we're crazy. in a po point now where you just can't be ignorant. And if you honestly don't see this stuff as what it is, if you don't see just how bad the racism and the the hate in our country has gotten, then like you are following the wrong people. You got to get your shit together, bud, because to the rest of us, this is plain yeah. as fucking day. Yeah. And and, you know, we can't really like. We can't make villain the people who disagree. That's I think where the big problem is is happening is it's it's more. It's more fun to watch videos online of watching the racist guy yell at the guy with the sign than it is to watch bills being passed of like, you know, justice. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's, it, it's fun to make a villain. It, it's fun to say, fuck those people, man. They, they're tearing down signs. Right. Um, but it shouldn't be, it, it, it shouldn't be fuck anybody, man. It should be like, man, I feel for them mm -hmm. because it goes back to what we were saying, like, you know, it's education. Like, that is the real fucking problem here. People are not educated enough in, in certain things, you mm -hmm. know, whether it be um, how other cultures live their life or whether it be, you know, how the voting system works. Regardless, education is a huge thing. And how could you expect people who don't have great education to make great financial decisions? to make great decisions for their health, to, to make great decisions to elect the people who run the law to even make those other two possible. Mm -hmm. So you know, it, it, it really does. It, I don't know, man, like, cause there's people in my family who are right down the middle. I got people who want Trump on office and I got people who want Biden in office, you know what I mean? And, and I hear both, you know, and, and, and I understand everyone's frustrations, but when it boils down to is, you know, I just don't believe that people are really getting the proper education. And then there are those few people who just snub their nose to any yeah. sort of facts. And most people are fucking idiots. Yeah, so, they okay. fucking are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's okay. That, but like, like we, we have those kids, you know? I do agree, though. Like, there's there's this really weird line to walk, right? Because we're we're trying to view people as humans. We're trying to understand kind of the psychology of it and recognize how easy it is to remain ignorant if you know that's all you hear it's it's like we talk in chat about how like we try to give assholes a break because yeah. for all we know their parents are assholes their siblings are assholes their extended family all their friends They're everyone the yeah like everyone they know has been toxic since forever so when you meet their bullshit with more bullshit you're just proving to them that that's what the world is and it this is not a position that everyone should feel themselves um, like obligated to be in, but whenever pass possible acting out of compassion and looking at this person and saying like, can we have a serious conversation about this without it turning into just like yelling and screaming it in my experience has led to more good discussions, but like, you know, that's, that's, that's not something that we're going to say, like, especially to black people and people of color who are being like harmed by this shit day in and day out. It's not on, on y'all to like sit and try and teach racists not to be racist. This is where those white allies need to step the fuck up. That's on the system. No, mm -hmm. no, no. Ab absolutely. I don't, I don't believe that anybody has to openly tell somebody 
and teach somebody how not to shit on them. You know, mm-hmm. that is not that, that that is ridiculous. But you know, it, you yeah, con- it takes it takes a lot of take takes a lot of strength to to get to compassion when you're so hot. Yeah. You're so pissed and you're and, and you're so angry to just see through that and 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 come from from a position of compassion. Man, you know, that's that's you gotta practice that every day, you know? Yeah. Do you and do that? Do you videos, practice compassion on a daily basis in some form? Dude, I have to. I have to. Because there are some times where my three year old will just like <laughs> just throw his nine year nine month old brother like on the floor and you're just like, How do I not want to spank your ass right now? Mm-hmm. But we don't spank our kids. You know? I was awesome. spanked as a kid. Same. You know, I was spanked as a kid and I'm fine. I'm I'm a great father, you know, that so I don't really know the science or whatever, but we choose not to. That's just, it's our decision with our kids and we choose not to spank our kids. And, and, you know, and obviously I, I try and practice compassion in, in many forms of ways, but every day it's a constant reminder because you're, you are your child's world. So you have to, what world do you want them to live in? Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's for us. It's constantly just like lead by example, lead by example. It's so hard or it, it's so hard not to just give in to how you know stub your toe fuck man like, oh, <laughs> fuck that guy. This off. Or, yeah you know like or like you know it, it, it's hard not to make your bullshit your children's bullshit and and that right there is is you just have to be mindful of that man and and then i take that into pretty much everything now you know prior to i mean prior to having children like being in a band is just constantly it's it's constantly like giving everything that you have for pretty much nothing Mm. until people will find the value in that and and in doing that you know you you meet a lot of people who have very little you know to their name and and people who just are you know really um uh, just have have a lot to say and and you hear a lot of stories and you you can't help but become compassionate you know I feel that during the come up. During the come up, yo. Speaking of that, when when we decided we were gonna do this, um, I I like sat and was kind of like just daydreaming, thinking about stuff that we could talk about, even though I knew like it would just go where it goes. But I I was like, oh, I'm gonna be like that girl that goes to the the band when they're playing and wears the band shirt. I'm gonna be that fucking guy today, so I'm gonna wear my Sublime shirt. Yeah. And as I'm as I'm finding this in my closet, I was like trying to think about how long I've had this and like I I grew up on sublime like I I remember being like I had moved to um this area outside of Chicago when I was really young and one of my first friends that I met in third grade had introduced me to sublime like in in the year years of like third to fifth grade somewhere around there and I have like was that? that oh god I don't even know but I know, I know Bradley Noel died when I was like 10. 96. Yeah, because I remember being it, in her bedroom as little kids. And like, she had all these fucking horrific porcelain dolls all around her room. These little fucks were just staring at us. It was awful. But I remember laying on her bed and singing along to Sublime with her. And like, we're little fucking kids and we're singing Caress Me Down, like knew all the fucking words. And it's, oh, okay. it's so messed up looking back on it, but also so it's funny. Like the dirtiest song in the world. The fucking, the most dirty one, but having no idea I'm singing about a fucking mushroom tip. And I'm, I have no idea what the fuck that means. But like, I remember her going to school. <laughs> I remember her going to school after, after Bradley died. And it was some kind of like a show and tell kind of thing or something. And everyone was like standing up in their seats and sharing something with the class. And she stood up and was just so bummed. And she was like, Bradley Noel died. And like, there were like three kids in the class that were really upset. And it was like me, her and one other kid. So it was just so weird to like reflect on that and be like, I actually have been like listening to this stuff from a really young age because of our like older siblings influences. I've had this shirt since junior high school. Yeah, because that's an older shirt. I, I had the same shirt, but in green because they, they did a black one and a, and a and like a baseball green. It was like a forest green kind of. 
bro um, how fucking brother, nuts was like, it finding that you're like working with them now though do you still get like tripped out crazy. over that every day i mean every day because it's like it was just it has been the most incredible journey like that i've ever heard of you know like, <laughs> you know for me at least like i i wanted a big life when i was a kid i had some really big aspirations and 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 i knew i was gonna get there because that's just all i knew it's all i wanted um but i never knew it'd be this you know? <laughs> I, I never knew it'd be this big you know my big life i just wanted to be able to pay my rent playing music yeah but like so you know it trips me out man to this day every day you know like the everything in my life has come from sublime has come from sublime's music and you know even before i i met eric and bud but prior to that musically everything that i really like took to the heart and learned and and took his inspiration it came from sublime too so it's been like a just a life full of sublime <laughs> it's like a sublime life man. oh and my god <laughs> like, i don't know it's tight you know it's 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 incredible I try to explain it to my kid, but you know he don't really get it yet. So I'll explain it to him later. But <laughs> Maybe know. by the time and, he's five, he'll get it. Yeah, and it's crazy because, like, for the rest of the world, you know, like shit moves on. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, cool, Sublime was back together ten years ago, rad. You know, so it's like, you know, for everyone else, it's like whatever. But for me, I still think about this shit all the time. Every time I get into my car, every time I wake up, dude, there's still this. There's still times like at least maybe once a week, sometimes twice a week, where I'll just be in the house and I'll like just pause for a second and I'll look around and like every fucking thing in this house, including the house itself, is paid for by music, by you derived from music, not from anything, not from retail, not from a clothing company I have, not from, fuck, it's all from music. And I'm just, I've blown away by that still to this day still. I think that's the right attitude to have though. Like if there is such a thing is to keep yourself mindful of that forever. I think that's where people get twisted up as they start. Like you've, you've certainly seen some artists and I've seen some content creators that get to a certain level of notoriety and then it just becomes this expectation from them. They feel entitled to a certain that's lifestyle it. or something. But like, That's I'm just it, so grateful sure. to do this. If I can't do content creation anymore and all this goes away, I'm going to be so happy that it happened. You know, like, fuck, man, that was a cool five years of my life. How rad that I got to do that. Like I, like I'm sure every one of our favorite artists, we enjoy connecting with people. Mm. That's that's the best part. There's there's fucking, you know, hell of people watching this right now. And and I think that that's. We wouldn't be doing it if no one was watching, you know. What I mean? like, <laughs> it's beautiful. Like we don't take that for granted, and and like you said, there are people who get to a point where they they lose track of that, and that's when they start thinking that it's all about them. Mm. They can go make that fucking techno album, or they can stop doing this type of content because now they want to drop a hip hop album, or now they want to get into acting, and it's like, yo, this isn't about you. It's about the people. The community you've created, it's about the art you put into the world, it's, it's the timing of it and, and, and the magic. There's magic when something works, I think, and you have people that follow you and see the vision that you see. That's magic. There's 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 something that's working there. And you know, you don't want to fuck around with that too much. You don't wanna you don't wanna be bigger than the magic, you know. Yeah. You should never think you should never think yourself bigger than that because because it ain't about you. It's it's about them. Fuck. You know? Yeah. It's about them. Fuck yeah. That's how I feel in this community. There's there's some definite idol culture going on where, you know, everyone wants to stand somebody. And like I make jokes about standing people, but otherwise, like I, I try to reiterate regularly through streams, like, please don't please don't get too attached to like me as some like head of this community. Like I could get hit by a bus tomorrow and be gone. And I don't want anyone to ever think that like I was a requirement for any of this community stuff to work. Like I just gave you a place to connect. Like we're all growing together, you know? 
and you're you're out there putting out this dope ass music that gives people that ability to connect if something should happen to you it doesn't mean that connection is gone like find those those people uh, right yeah. yeah that's it you know and and that's what's really rad about music specifically is that you know and and even like streaming i have my problems with streaming or whatever sure what artist doesn't right but aside from that you know how fucking cool it is to not have a cd get taken down from a shelf mm. like that's pretty sick like the shit's up and it's there forever you know well until the next big thing is but yeah for now it's streaming right so it's like you know i i think it's pretty rad that you know we we'd be able to to learn all this practice all of it and then record it and then put it out to the world you know and in your instance i mean you you basically go on tour every day you, <laughs> yeah. you know you you talk to your community every single day and and and, and they love you for that you know and and that's why it's hard not to not to put people on on a pedestal because you know it takes a really special person to wake up and want to do this every single day it mm. really does um you know amidst the hate and amidst the self doubt and all the bullshit that we got to deal with as humans like let alone you know on the business side of everything it's not always as awesome as it looks to people you know in every industry and in every facet yeah so you know i I think that, you know, it, it does take a, a special person to be able to, to get everybody together and say, Hey guys, we're, it's all good. Like, <laughs> today, we're, we're all in this together. Let's make some music or, or let's talk about stuff or let's draw or let's write or whatever, you know, but whatever it is, it, it, it takes a really special person and, and people, you know, there, there's not a sea of those people out every single day, you know? So it's like, when people do see that they're grateful and they're like, you know, love this person. Don't ever get hit by a bus. You know, that's, <laughs> that's, that's where it comes from, you know, but, but I do think that in doing so, you know, God forbid you were to leave the earth, you know, anybody, what, what it does is it leaves a void for a follower mm. a person who followed you take the reins and kind of do what you did and put their twist and continue it moving forward. Yeah, that's, that's what it is, you know, whether it's, you know, a, a band or a fucking a reiteration of a movie or, or, or Jesus, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah, but it's, 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 it's something so good. And it's and, and it only works for good stuff, man. You can't you can't do it with bad shit. You know, negativity, it doesn't have it doesn't have a shelf life like that. Mm. Just at least in, in my experience, eventually it just dies off dies off with the person yeah especially you know? if it's not encouraged if it's not constantly like ramped up if if you're not because you know there's those toxic communities online that they yep. they basically recruit so many people with shitty mindsets but those people as they can they, never be the majority exactly as they kind of spread out and they start having more people say kindly like cut that shit out eventually they start thinking like wait a minute all the nice people are telling me just to chill and all of the really angry people are telling me this is the only way Absolutely. And then, you know, and God forbid it ever gets big enough, it gets clamped. It, it always just becomes some sort of subset of population. Yeah. But, you know, the, like when things get too bad, it gets corrected, you know? It yeah. Has to. I feel like it does. I, at that's least. What's happening right now. Yeah. I hope to God, that's exactly what's happening right now. Literally we're, what we're I was thinking. Corrected. Yeah, I really fucking hope so, because like for this year to be the shit show that it is and to not see essentially like a revolution come out of this, it will absolutely be disappointing, you know, and oh, yeah. scary because the the main thing that we're looking for is to get this guy out of office who clearly thinks that people of color are animals and that that black people, you know, basically deserve everything that they're getting wants to create this crazy dictatorship like this is horrifying really scary shit i think i think this will i mean this will have a profound impact on the world moving forward because there's just no way that this time frame the last five years will not be documented in, in history book. you know what i mean like our like my kids are going to be reading about this and, and 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 this will affect how they treat people and and how they act so it's like 
Are we going to see any sudden changes within the next year? Fuck no. This is going to be a long, slow process, you know, of course, because changing human, you know, coding and wiring and, and the shit that they, they, you know, idolize, like changing all that, it takes time, man. It does. It takes a lot of time. And we have to be patient. We, we have to be patient with this. But, you know, I, I, I do believe that good will come from this. I'm an optimistic person. You know, I don't have time. I don't I don't hang out with people. I have no time for people who are, you know, who come around and are like, fuck the world, fuck people. Yeah. You know, all that stuff. I'm like, I don't that's that is not the way to go about. Yeah. Not not my world. You know what I mean? It's not fuck the world. It's love the world. And it's like, yes, people. <laughs> like Yeah. Because we're in this shit together. You know what I'm saying? So I like that your um, optimism isn't like it doesn't feel like naive optimism where you're just like, don't worry, guys, everything's going to work out. Like you're optimistic because you are putting in the work and you see others putting in that work. Optimistic because I believe in people. That's why, you know, it's a, it's a lot of hard work. It's going to be mm -hmm. a lot of hard work. I know that. But ultimately, you know, I, I, I do believe in people and, and I do believe that in the end, you know, we always will somehow make the right decision um, collectively. You know, the, the, the strong, good voices do, do get heard. Um, but, you know, it takes time, man. Mm -hmm. It takes time, you know? Look how far we've come in civil rights from, you know, since, since like the 30s, you know? Yeah. We still got a long way to go, you know? Crazy long, long way. way and, and, and this year, especially this last couple of months, showed everybody where to fucking start yes you know? like <laughs> like okay you guys want to just keep it in conversation here's how we can get active yeah let's so. fucking talk about defunding the police and reallocating that that crazy military budget towards all these different services that humanize people rather than criminalize them guns more education and science man yeah that's, that will that's my position it will always be be my position um because yeah I hope that from from all of this, you know, the future generation at least learns like, hey, if you take your eyes off of your your government, people are gonna take advantage of it and do whatever they want with it. Yeah. Like you 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 can't keep focused on these like, you know, Kardashians or fucking whatever. Like you it's it's fun. You can get away and stuff, but you, you have to care a little bit of what the world's going on yeah and i'm and the kids kind of saw that i think you know because they got way too hyped up in like you know green and like shit and I was like, <laughs> but it's cool like now I, I think that they'll see like you know a lot of fucked up shit started happening and they're like we we can't let that happen man i don't want to be 20 living in a world like that they're like all right then get your head in the game kids Let's exactly go. I think that's like, I, I thought that was kind of an over exaggeration for a while. The idea that like the reason why the youth are so mobilized at this point, like they're so involved is because we basically are handing them a dying world that is just corrupt and broken. Like I, I didn't quite buy into that until I started actually looking into it more. And I was like, oh shit, these are the, like some of the most well-informed people we now have in our world is the youth that know how to consume and find information quickly. And what they are seeing is the unfortunate reality of it is that if things don't drastically change, they are not going to get the world that we've had the pleasure of living in for all this time. And definitely the people over us, you know, all the fucking boomers and shit. World. Hopefully a better world. Hopefully. You know? I, the, and I don't believe that we left them some decrepit earth. You know, Earth is a lot better. I mean, like, I, I forgot the statistic, but women, like, it was like close to fifty percent. Like, women would just die for giving birth to a baby. So it's like we've we've come a long way in modern science, and and even socially in a crazy world, you used to be able to put slaves and make them build Egypt. You know what I mean? So, but where we do it, I think, like, where this will have to go is is kind of, um, I think like. The kids enter the world, man, and we don't tell them nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Like, jack shit. So it's like, it's, it's fucking terrifying. You know what I mean? Um, it's absolutely possible for a young man to create a business and, and support his family in the United States of America. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. That is an absolute possibility in this country. 
in school, do they focus, do they teach a person how to do that? No, mm -hmm. you know, like they don't even teach you what to do when you go to college. Yeah. You know, like, it's just like, cool, you'll learn there and you'll figure it out. And it's by then it's just like party time. So it's like, take on this you know, massive I, debt for this thing. We're going to tell you, you need in order to survive in the world when that's really not the case. It, you know, maybe not for everybody. That's the truth. Yeah, absolutely. Because I have, an, I have an attorney and my attorney has to go to college. I will not hire an attorney who, goes, who doesn't go to college. Yeah, sort of um, a different so, situation, so, so, right? So, so, so it, it's not a blanket policy that we can just say, fuck college, right? You know, I'm a high school dropout. So the fact that I'm even de defending colleges is crazy. But there's a need. It's not for everybody. But I think as far as education goes, we, we need to make that shit aware to people. Mm -hmm. We need to show them that that there are other ways and to 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 support yourself in this country and more importantly here's how yes to support yourself in this country you know here here's a taste of the true social injustices that go on in this country here's a taste of the true social injustices that are this country is built upon you know that way when these kids or young adults are released into the world they're not so naive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're a little bit more prepared. Yeah, because if you can't, if you don't understand the systems, you can't dismantle them. Like, and that's, that's the position we're in now is we're seeing how much of this needs to be fucking torn apart. Just start the fuck over. But I, I do want to yeah, go back to one, one thing though, because like the idea of, of saying like, we're kind of giving them this like dying world it, it's more true than I realized, like as, as a diver, right? I love scuba diving, realizing that in the next, I, I think it was like 30 years or something, the corals could be gone if we don't do shit. Like there's so like many- Scientifically? Yeah, scientifically yeah. speaking with like global warming, with like all of these different animals and species that are ga getting like eradicated, which causes these crazy, you know, catastrophic uh, chain events of like deforestation and stuff. And then when it comes to our lives, right, like we may be living longer as like a whole, but pregnancy mortality is still a really high number and it's still crazy high for black women and women of color, especially. So like there is still a lot that is fucked up in those but respects. So of an effect due to uh, socially, though, you know, like how just just yeah based on economics like you know the hospitals or or the doctors you know even um performing those operations yeah i mean i'd, I'd assume because i mean okay sci scientifically speaking yes i would say that the earth is probably shifting towards uh, a much you know drastic place as far as temperatures goes right mm -hmm. but at, at the same time you know as human beings are going i like to think that we've we've progressed in that regard. So that's like kind of where like I, I was saying, you. like as far as like, you know, leaving them like a broken and tattered world, like it is um, you know, fundamentally we 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 have sort of progressed from from say like the sixteen hundreds, you know. Mm -hmm. But scientifically, I mean I'm I'm with you. We're fucking obliterating our ozone. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, you yeah, know, we've yeah. we've left them tools and we you know we're obviously still young as fuck ourselves right so we're a part of this but like Absolutely. definite work needs to happen and if you're looking at it as like well we live longer than like 50 now yeah that's that's rad but we're also just like polluting ourselves in so many different ways yeah. and we're learning you know i'm glad we're not dropping atom bombs on people anymore you know what i mean um but i think that like you said we've given the tools and now it's and and you know we've we've put a lot of these issues out to to the forefront of the media now, um, and now we're getting some really rad young people who are starting to make sense of all this. Yeah, in a, in a newer kind of enlightened way. Yeah, and and you know, shit can always be better, right? Like, and it's not like a car or like a house, you know, where it's like you know what my house is good enough. I'm grateful, mm -hmm. like the world doesn't really work like that. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? Like it, it, you have to constantly strive to be per perfecting yeah. because things change. You know, we're, we're 
we're organisms, you know what I mean? Like it's it's still biology at the nature of it. So so things change and and they morph. And you know, as as that goes along, we have to be prepared to to be able to, you know, better ourselves and and, and grow with it. I'm I'm with you on that, you know. Fuck yeah. Hey, how much time do you have left? I want to be mindful of that cuz you said you had about an Sorry. hour. I don't want you to run yeah. late for some shit. Uh, I got to be out of here like at noon, so like 30 minute drive so like another 10 15 10 15 okay red do you uh do you want to enjoy the 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 greenery that you you were getting ready before we got started yes i went to go get a lighter ah. I, like, Shit, I missed my window you go right ahead we'll call this our nice little wake and bake session and i'm gonna i'm gonna be right over here for a second soldering my pc because obviously it's acting up we were talking yeah, about having yeah. a real nice in pot in person podcast session a long time ago, and like, fuck, man, that's still coming in the future. Happen next time if if I'm ever on tour again. It will happen. We're gonna make it happen. All right, I'm gonna mute to torch this real quick. I mean, to solder my fucked up PC. Um, yeah, it's gonna solder my PC too. <laughs> You can use yours on stream. You're in a legal area. You're safe. All right. Old school. My audio is a bit low. I'm sorry. I can see some of the comments over here. Yeah, I think we just lose you a little bit when you when you scooch away from the mic a bit. Oh, that's good. I was just smoking. You don't need. Yeah, to yeah, that. no big deal on that. People just <laughs> hear me cough. So, like, what what are you doing in the meantime? Like, are you just kind of rocking out with like what you've built up so far, or is there something else you're leaning into now that you can't tour? Well, I mean, it's still business as usual. I'm still making a bunch of music. Um, I, I do a lot of writing and producing for other artists and stuff. So I've been just finishing up records and getting that going. And, um, you know, I got an album that I'm doing uh, for this Roman Duddy project. Me and the singer from the Dirty Heads, we have a, a, pr a project. We were on tour because it was going awesome. And then COVID, so we had got canceled and got sent home. Um, so I'm finishing up that album. Sublime's going in, doing the record. And... Um, in the winter and i mean uh my my wife and i as far as like my income goes my, my wife and i we we've, we've done real estate for like the last like six years so oh that's dope it's kind of like and, and out here it's and i'm in tennessee now so it's like uh you know it's a little more uh spread out you know it's cool but yeah you know i just stay busy you know and and, and working on music i've been going on twitch and doing the live streams those were rad. Um, but then I moved, so but now I'm back. So you're gonna back bring those back then? Get back on Twitch it's more? It's time. It's time. Fuck I got yeah. it all set up now. This was like the the debut of it. If I can see it run. I, I did a little test run on I think Friday or Thursday and it went over good. But those are rad, you know, it's just me in there playing songs and chatting with people, kind of picking their brain and you know. Kind of doing what you do, except yeah. just singing a couple songs, you know? Yeah, I do that, except yeah, my songs are always it. stupid. It's like, scooping up a dab, scooping up a dab. That's the dab song, if hey, you couldn't pick I that up. I got some stupid songs. Too, <laughs> I was happy when I, because I remember finding you on Twitch, and, like, it had been maybe a year or so after, I think, I was introduced to Sublime with Rome. Like, y'all just showed up on my feed one day, and I was like, Come what? What is this voice I'm hearing? And then immediately like started texting with some friends and talking about how they had just heard about Sublime with Rome. And like I know I've told you this before, but I'm going to say it again because I'm sure people in the chat will want to echo this sentiment. They could not have picked a better person to awesome. create the second coming, like the Sublime with Rome brand that you have. Like everyone who who I've talked to about you says the same thing. They love how respectful you are of the lineage of of the brand you know yeah that's awesome man i appreciate that and your I mean, voice I, I is awesome it's so fucking unique dude i don't even like i don't know how we got introduced or something I, I don't know if it was like in stream or if uh 
think it was like through Twitter, but I just remember seeing your your stream and I was like, dang, like you had all your people in there and you guys were all just like chatting and it was like everybody was just like having a good time and like your shit looks all dope and it sounds great. And I was like, I need to do some shit like that. <laughs> I, need to, I need to take take like what I do musically, but do it like what she's do. So yeah, I, I just hit you up. I was like, yo, how does your shit look so sick? <laughs> no, nah, man. Uh, um, well, we'll definitely have to get together and do the in-person podcast too, you know? Yeah. Um, we, we tried last time we were on tour, we, we were in Chicago, but it was a fucking crazy day. And mm -hmm. Just gnarly. We're going to make it happen. But, nah, we will. I, the, the world will resume some sort of normalcy again. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming hopefully around or after election time, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll we will see. see. We need people to, you know, try to stay home and wear their masks and do all that kind of shit. That would be real great. Even if you don't, even if you don't believe it, just why not? You yeah. Know? Like, why not? Yeah, exactly. Just, what is the harm? Like, let let people feel a little more comfortable by you doing this one very fucking simple thing. That's all you gotta do, man. Mm -hmm. That's all you gotta do. I got some family members who like make it a big deal. They're like, I ain't trying to wear my mask. I'm like, oh, man, take it off as soon as you sit down. Yeah, it's like eight seconds. <laughs> it's it's the so ridiculous. Oh man, but, you know, it's it's funny though cuz we were we were talking about like when we found each other on Twitch and I just remembered what it was. It was because I had been following you in the band on Twitter and it was when you were doing a test stream on Twitch. Cuz I saw you post the link and I had this like, "Oh shit, Rome's on Twitch moment" cuz I saw the twitch.tv slash and I like rushed to go into the chat to see you setting stuff up. And it was great because you were like in this this awesome little, you looked like you were in like a dope music cave. Everything was all just like right up That's in your studio. face. Yeah. Dude, I think I remember. I, oh, I do remember. Cause like, I didn't know, I think that, that I hit it live. And I was <laughs> yeah. like doing my hair and you were like, your hair looks good. And I was like, <laughs> Oh shit, I'm live. That's right. And you were having some audio issues too, because like I was hearing I'm you through fuck, audio is the worst aspect of a content creator's life. I can only imagine being a content creator and a musician having to deal with audio shit all the time. Uh, you know, it's for me, it's it's internet. Like I have like internet problems. It's just always like where I live. Because like with audio. I have to like, cause I have a studio. So I had to like reverse engineer it basically um, at my old spot. Now I just have a whole separate rig cause it was a fucking nightmare. Mm. But now I'm just like, hey, you have your own microphone and your own little sound card to do that. Um, but I just been having internet problems at my old spot. It's better now. So Good. I'm, I, I'm doing a, a live stream this week um, for like an hour. So I'll, I'll know, you know, if there's any dropouts or anything, but do you know when not. you're going to be doing that? So we can tell people right now and they can all tune in. Yes. Uh, no, I don't. So, <laughs> no, I don't. yes. Well, you said I that so convinced. <laughs> I know, but, but then I forgot that I have to, I have to leave because we're doing a drive-in show. Oh, so, cool. dude. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're doing a drive-in show. So actually it's going to be next week. Um, we're doing a drive-in show on Friday. And, um, dude, it's crazy. Like we've never done anything like this before. And you know, it's all social distance. Right. But we're doing two shows because, uh, not everybody can watch at the same time because you can only fit so many cars in. A oh, lot. that makes sense. Yeah. So you do one show for half the audience and then the other, and they leave and then the other audience pulls in and you gotta do another show for them then. Um, but yeah, I'll let you know how it goes. Bro, I, send me some pictures of how weird that is to look out at the cars. Like, we get stressed. well, you know what? I'll tell you this: we we did this uh, we did this show in Sturgis, um, North Dakota. It's 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 a um, it's a motorcycle festival. I mean, a big one. Like, hundred thousand people show up to this thing, and like the first, you know, probably like four hundred people were all people on their motorcycles. So it was just playing to a bunch of headlights, revving their engines. So that I'm sounds assuming... like such a vibe though. It was tight. It was tight. So I'm like, 
kind of hoping it'll it'll be uh something like that you know yeah well, sturgis was awesome man. that was a badass show i love that dude bikers know how to party i sold harleys when i was I younger was so like i've been i've been in the the biker culture from a young age they they party man they party they party hard party hard i'm wondering if doing this this drive-in show I, i'd be interested because i've only seen like pictures in like passing meaning like scrolling past them you know i wonder if this is like almost a good thing in the sense that for a while it seemed like whenever people went to shows they were just convinced that their purpose there was to record it and put it on instagram you know like every fucking person's got their hand up in the air with their that. phone maybe this is the thing that finally gets people to like look at it while it's in front of them because they're fucking tired of looking at just their devices now yo i didn't even think about i wonder that. if people are going to be more present as a result right. of this and you're going to have that like real good like focused energy from people again 1980s energy yeah <laughs> that that's dude i didn't even think about that that's a fucking really great observation how does that you know. how does that make you feel typically like do you do you give a shit do you even notice it when you see like just everyone kind of holding up a phone i don't care <laughs> dude however you want to enjoy the show is up to you like you paid for the ticket you fucking if you want to go hang out at the bar if you want to get so drunk that you get into a fight and you get kicked out of the first song <laughs> Whatever, dude. I don't care. Like, it, however you want to enjoy the show. Oh my um, god. So, you know, for, if you want every video to put up on your story, or if you just want all the videos for yourself, sweet. Um, but I will tell you this: I don't play to those people when I'm on stage. You're not gonna like when go and like of, like get right nah. up in. Well, if they're on the phone and shit, like, and they're up front, I'll grab their phone and and, and be like, put it up. But like, <laughs> when I'm like jamming and you're like looking at a fan in the oh. eye, you know, and like you guys are having that moment, like when you guys are having that moment, like you don't do that with someone with a camera, just because mm -hmm. you can't even see them. You know? There's not like a real connection. But but yeah, That's I know some artists that are like, you know, fucking put your phones down. You know, I get it, but I don't care, man. Just, just <laughs> you know? Don't throw anything. That's the whole That's fucking vibe right there. <laughs> you know, like, what? I'm just playing music. It's not as serious. Oh, my God. That's I, I've got this this quote that I heard from Ram Dass that just, like, I think about it all the time. If it's not fun, don't do it. If you must do it, make it fun. Like, I think about that a lot. People take shit too fucking seriously. And, like, you know, you could very yeah. easily come at this with the approach of, like, I'm a fucking, I'm a professional musician. You need to respect me and my craft. But you're just like, eh, fuck it. Have fun. Fun. I, I think that comes off better than just being so serious. Or fuck, I mean, I don't know. I just enjoy it better. <laughs> I don't like being serious, you know? I, I, whenever I try and like be serious and like get my, you know, <laughs> don't try for fucking around right now. Like get to work. <laughs> No, like nothing ever gets done you know? <laughs> that 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 like project never it like, comes out and doesn't make any you know doesn't it's not a success or i don't know you know what i mean it's like i figured out at this point in my life that my biggest wins my highest successes whatever personally financially they've all been from me being in a place of just comfort just at ease peace you know just not trying super hard, trying to be someone I'm not, or, you know, just, just letting it go, man. Going with the flow. There's a flow in this world and got to line up with it. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But fuck man. That's, that's exactly how I feel though. Is like, I'm finally in this place that I didn't even know existed years ago where I feel like I'm just like in it and I'm just seeing like, all right, I'll ride the wave wherever you take me, take me. But I'm, doing my best oh, yeah. to stay present because if i'm not present i don't feel that i start pushing That's for it. things i start needing stuff oh i gotta hit this or else and it just drives yeah. me fucking crazy you're all tensed up all the time man good for you stay with that stay with that and life is gonna be fun fuck It'll yeah just, you never know man the doors start opening and just you know yeah just just keep on that and make good decisions and you're in for a fucking ride, you know?
that's what I keep telling people because like it's still like you, like you're talking about I still get blown away all the time like walking through the house walking looking at all this stuff and knowing what I get to do all day especially when we get off on random ass tangents in chat like we spent <laughs> fucking 40 minutes having people draw uh, a dude with a chicken as a dick chicken dicks whatever came to mind when they thought of the the phrase chicken dicks and they went in the gallery and they posted all these fucking ridiculous <laughs> ass pictures oh of dudes with chickens for cocks and like i was laughing so hard just thinking this is my job i fucking i'm i'm making wow. my money doing this right now what the fuck is life it's so rad i mean it's what you make it right yeah That's beautiful part about it yeah and yeah, it's it's such a trip that you can like choose to just say everything is for my benefit and it changes the whole experience like oh that really tough time i'm going through right now it's gonna be dope seeing what's on the other side of that it's hard to do it but you gotta you know fuck yeah it's man imperative. fuck yeah if you could give uh some parting words to people looking to live a more authentic existence to find that flow what would you say to all of these lovely people out here? I would say, uh, you don't meet a lot of people who care. So when you have those people who do care, keep them close. It's hard to come by. Yeah. I fucking love that. And be one of those people for others, y'all. Straight up. Straight up. It's, it's reciprocative. You know, it goes, goes both ways gotta care good for good for the world i think mm -hmm. more people care we'd be in less shitty positions yeah for real for real well i'm gonna i'm gonna let you dip so that you don't have to rush through whatever's coming next and enjoy the fucking oh, drive-in right. show that's that's gonna be so I'll super you know, dope it's gonna be tight it's just gonna be crazy i don't have to you know mentally be like whoa it's a lot of honking <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thanks for having me on Snaps. Uh, anytime, man. We can chat it up. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Um, is there anything else you want to plug? You said you got albums coming. You got you got good shit in yeah, the future. Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff. Just just follow me on Twitch at Rome Ramirez. Um, and hit the little bell. Is there a bell you get or something? There's a yeah. The there's bell. a bell. Hit the bell, uh, baby. I know how to stream. I'm oh, totally you're... pro. <laughs> is there a bell? So you're alert when I'm going live. That's all. And you don't even, you don't even got to sub. Just, just come in and just listen to us jam. It's fun. I'll be doing more of it. But uh, yeah. All right. I love you guys. Be safe. You're fucking awesome, Rome. You have a great day, dude. All right. Bye. Bye.